Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving leak code problem 791, custom sort string. Let's read the question prompt. You are given two strings, order and s. All the words of order are unique and were sorted in some custom order previously. Permute the characters of s so that they match the order that order was sorted. More specifically, if a character x occurs before a character y in order, then x should occur before y in the permuted string. Return any permutation of x that satisfies this property. Essentially what this question is doing is it's giving us an order string and it's asking us to reorganize s such that it conforms to the order in you know, our order string. So for example, if our order was given to us as CBA, and we've given the string a, a, b, c, c, d, f, g, then we should return this string. Let's look at why. Well, we can see that the first character in our order is c. So that means that any c's should be first. So we pull all the c's from here and we slap them into our string. Then the next character is b, we get the b and we put it next. Then the next character is a and we have a, a, because there's two a's here. Now, what's interesting about this problem is that we can actually be given letters in our you know, string S here that are not in order. For any of these characters, we can return them in any order that we want. We don't really care. They're not part of the order um, string, so it doesn't matter. We could have returned C, C, B, A, 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 and then you know, G, F, D, or F, D, G. It doesn't matter for these last three because they're not in order. We only care about ordering the you know order ones correctly. After that, we can do whatever we want. So the way that we want to solve this problem is that essentially what we want to do is we want to maintain a dictionary of the counts for each character. So in our S, you know, we're gonna have A, and this is gonna have, as we can see, two characters, right? B is gonna have one count, C is gonna have, you know three counts, D is also going to have one count, uh, F is going to have one count, G is going to have one count. Once we've built this dictionary, what we want to do is then iterate over order and build our string as we go. So we're going to go you know, from left to right in order, because that's the sorted order, and we're going to say, okay, do we have any C's on our string? Yes, we do. So we have three of them. So that means to our kind of string builder, we need to append three C's. So we're going to say C, C, C. And then we're going to be, okay, we're B's. Do we have any B's? Yes, we have one B. So we're going to put B into our string builder. Then we're at the A and we say, okay, how many A's do we have? We have two A's. So we're going to add two A's to our string builder. Now you'll notice that we've processed our order string, but we still haven't rearranged you know, S because we still have D, F, and G. And what we need to do is we need to go through the remaining counts that we have and basically add them to the, the string builder. So, you know, we would add, you know, D, F, G. But how are we actually going to do that? Well, if we went through our dictionary, then, you know, we would be over, we would be doing these keys again, because if we just iterated over the keys and the value pairs, then you know we would still see these values and we would you know add them again if we were just going to append whatever was left in the dictionary so what we need to do is actually when we're going over order when we see okay do we have any c's we add it to our string builder we're actually then going to remove that key so we remove the c after we added the c's and then we go to the b we add it to our string builder then we remove the b key and then we do the same for a so that means that at the end, whatever is left in our dictionary here is going to be, um, you know, characters that were not in our ordered dictionary. Now what we can do, like I said, is just go through the remainder of the dictionary and then just add each character and its count to our string builder here, because at this point, the order doesn't matter. They weren't in our order string. So that means we can return them in any permutation that we want. And this is how we're going to make sure that we don't accidentally, you know, double count it by going over the dictionary again. So to summarize, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build our, um, you know, count dictionary here, which is going to have for every character in S, we're going to have the count of it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate from left to right of our order here. And we're going to look, okay, for every character, is it in our count dictionary? If it is, we're going to add that character 
however many times it shows up in our dictionary, then we're going to delete it from our dictionary and we're going to go on to the next character and do the same thing. So C, then B, then A. And then at this point, whatever is left in our dictionary are going to be characters that weren't in order. And that means that at this point, we can just add them to our string builder for however many counts they have, because order doesn't matter at this point. We've already satisfied the order by iterating over it entirely. So that's going to uh, so that's going to be how we're going to solve this problem. Let's go to the code editor and actually write the code and see how we're going to implement this. Okay, so now we're in the editor. Let's write the code. Remember that the first thing that we had to do was figure out the count of each character in our string s. So let's do that. So we're going to say s counts is going to be collections.counter s. If you don't have, um, you know, collections.counter in your language, Python has it. But essentially what it does is it just counts each of the you know characters in our string and returns us a dictionary with the key being the the character and the value being the count so it's just some syntactic sugar uh, around you know getting defining a dictionary and then adding one to the count each time uh, so it just makes it a nice one-liner if you don't have it then just use the dictionary anyway um, we need to set up our string builder right because we don't want to be concatenating strings so we're gonna say string builder is going to equal to a list and we want to remember iterate over each character in the order so we're going to say for char in order we're going to then say if the current character is in uh, s counts then remember that we need to add it to our string builder however many times it occurs so we're going to say res dot oops sorry, not res uh, we're going to say string builder dot extend and we're going to extend the string builder with character times however many times it shows up. So s counts, oops, s counts of char. So this is going to be the count. And then obviously this is going to be the, um, the character that we're adding. So we're basically adding it however many times it occurs in our string builder. And now remember, if the character was in s counts, we need to delete it from s counts. So that way when we finish, processing order whatever is left in s counts will just be the characters in s that were not in order so we need to say delete so we need to delete the key s counts of character and then we will do this for every character in order now remember that we have to process whatever's left in s counts to add it to our string builder because we have to use all the characters we can't just use the ones that were in order so we're going to say for character and its count in s counts dot items so this is just iterating all over all of the key value pairs in our dictionary we're gonna say res dot extend um, character times uh, count and at the end all we need to do is just um, you know join our string builder together to get the final string so we're gonna say return oops and I said res again it should be string builder we're gonna say return string builder oops it's I think it's gonna be return dot join yeah dot join string builder okay cool so let us submit this make sure that it works and we see that it does cool uh, before we go let's touch on the time and space complexity so for this portion where we're building the count for each of the characters in s this is going to be you know a big o of m operation where m is the number of distinct characters in s right and then our string builder you know is going to be storing our result which is going to be the length of you know s so what we you know are doing is you know bu building our string builder here uh, so we would need to basically go over the length of order uh, which is going to be, you know, we'll call it big O of N, where N is the length of order. Uh, and then we have this portion here where we're going over the rest of S counts. Uh, so essentially, you know, we can kind of ignore this portion here and we can just say, OK, well, it's going to be first we have to create the, the counts, which is going to take time. And then we basically just have to iterate over S. Um, so it's going to be in at the end of the day, it's going to be a linear solution. It's going to be big O of N. Um, and then space complexity wise, obviously we need space for the, the counter here. So again, this is gonna be big O of M where M is the number of distinct characters in S. And then, you know, our string builder is gonna 
uh, store whatever the length of s is because we just have to rearrange s based on the order. Um, so this is going to be you know big O of n, where n is the length of s here. Uh, so at the end of the day, you know this is going to be you know a, a linear solution. So we can just for all intents and purposes say uh, big O of n here. So that's going to be you know our um, time complexity and then also the uh, space complexity. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If there's any videos that you'd like to see, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to make a video for you guys. And in the meantime, happy coding.